This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. It straight up does not power on at all. Oddly enough, the symptoms started occurring around the time that the owner was trying to install an RGB software suite by the name of, I believe, Whirlwind FX Strip Lights. I'm not sure what else that could be if not an RGB software suite, but anyway, after multiple failed attempts to get this software to, to actually function properly, he kept uninstalling it. He decided to manually delete files that he thought were relevant to the software. And I believe that's possibly where we might have a problem, maybe deleted files that had nothing to do with the software suite and instead deleted something that was pertinent to the stability of the system itself, of the Windows operating system. So we'll have to check the integrity of those files. Uh, but then for it not to power on at all, it's very weird that, that a software related issue could straight up cause your PC not to even power on. So I'm again, I don't know the, the full like backstory behind this issue. He might have been unplugging and plugging cables and disconnecting things and who knows. It doesn't sound like this person, with all due respect, knows very much about gaming PCs. The way he described it, he just, this is his first gaming PC he's ever bought. It was a pre-built from, I believe, Skytech Gaming. I think it was, yeah, Skytech Archangel Gaming PC. I think we made a video about Skytech Gaming, but uh, he said that he couldn't get a hold of their customer service. It was just uh, a cluster, is what it sounded like. And so uh, he decided to reach out to me and see if I could fix it. I can't guarantee I'll be able to fix it, but I can at least run through the uh, pretty standard troubleshooting procedure and see if we can get this thing booting up again. Stay with me. Fellas, if you're in need of proper grooming, get set up with Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. You'll find their lawnmower 4.0 included, which boasts a sleek, waterproof design, wireless charging, and advanced skin safe technology for a smooth trim pretty much anywhere. And as nice compliments, you'll also get their Weed Whacker for ear and nose trimming, deodorant and toner for keeping fresh, and much more. Get 20% off plus free shipping at Manscaped with code SALAZAR at this link, which you can also find in the video description. Now the first step of every troubleshooting process should be to fire up the system and attempt to replicate the issue being described by the owner. This is no different than if you had a, a car maybe that was riding rough, maybe it didn't feel like it was firing on all cylinders. You bring it into a mechanic right here, she's gonna take it out on the road first thing and attempt to replicate the issue you described because it helps them zero in on the issue. They're not wasting time just kind of spitballing, trying a bunch of random things because they haven't seen for themselves what the issue is. And they've seen these problems more than likely more than you have. Uh, so that, that's why they do that, right? That's why they take them out for a test drive uh, because it, it saves them time in the long run. Uh, they know what to start testing first. Uh, I do the same thing here. It's the same thing on a smaller scale with computers. That's why I always fire these systems up first thing. So we're going to see if it powers on. <laughs> it's not turning on. Okay, uh, could be one of two things. Either this comes down to a simple wiring issue. It's very likely that he just miswired something and that's why the power button is not working or he has a dead component, maybe a dead motherboard. Who knows? So we're gonna check the obvious stuff first and kind of work our way down to the worst case scenario, which would be a dead major component. Now you can see the power button is lit up. So I believe the system is receiving power. It's just not booting up. Uh, and, and that again could lead me to either one of two conclusions, either it's simple wiring or it's a dead component. It's probably not the graphics card. That's usually not the reason why a system won't turn on. It could be the motherboard. It could be the CPU. I'm less inclined to believe it's the power supply, again, because we have this obvious sign of power here. Now there is more or less a standard for front IO, but every uh, front panel kind of connector suite, it'd be a bit different. So I'm gonna disconnect all of these, bypassing any potential wiring issue, and I'm just going to jump the two power pins with a screwdriver see if we can get it to turn on. So it's these two uppermost right pins. Nothing. Wow. That's, um, that's not good. Now I checked his major connections. His 24 pin looks fine. His 8 pin EPS also looks fine. This is a non-modular power supply in here. So there's no chance of this being user error on the power supply side. Seeing as though, you know, he, he could have not plugged in one of those modular cables all the way. That is impossible here. Uh, so I am going to check a few other things. First off, I'm going to check RAM. I'm going to see if he 
has seeded his memory module properly. He's just got one in here. In fact, if we can get the system working, I'll upgrade him to two DIMMs that will benefit him with this Ryzen CPU. The other thing I want to check that it will be pretty obvious, pretty easy to do, uh, is uh, the re reset the CMOS. So if we can reset the CMOS and, and have that fix it, then that, that'll be great. That's a very minimal effort uh, solution, though I have my doubts about that one. To rule out a potential RAM issue, I'm gonna swap this DIMM out with one that I am sure works because I have tested it in multiple systems in the past. This is just a LPX Corsair Vengeance module. So we've got that in there and let's power the system back on. And okay, I really didn't expect this. I plugged in my Passmark uh, power supply tester here. This thing's actually really cool and held the power button down. So I was powering the system on through this and it turns on, the system turns on. So it's almost like his front panel isn't properly functioning because there's no other way to power this board on other than via the front panel. Uh, unless we do it through this inline tester. We're gonna check for picture and nothing. So we're gonna power the system on again. I've got the other cables connected to the unit. So it shouldn't beep this time. There we go, and it's not. And we can see that everything is a, uh, everything's receiving appropriate power. Yeah, it's all pass. Looks good. So the power supply is fine. In fact, it looks like the entire system is fine, but for whatever reason, we're still not getting display out to the monitor. So that's a bit strange. So at this point, I am definitely leaning towards a bad motherboard. Uh, maybe not a dead motherboard. I mean, the system does power on, but it does not send a uh, signal out through the graphics card. I don't think it's a bad graphics card though. Uh, power supply is fine, but there's gotta be a, an explanation for why we can't power on this motherboard via any other means than with the inline PSU tester. Front panel jumping does not work. The, uh, you know, using a, a mechanical button, that doesn't work either. There's no other way to power this board on. So th that's why I think there's something finicky going on with the motherboard. We're gonna try swapping it out uh, after about 30 seconds, by the way, that the system just shuts back off again. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's gonna be the next thing we try. I, it looks like the symptoms are pointing toward that. I could be wrong, but we're gonna give it a shot. So we'll be removing pretty much everything from this motherboard. Cables have been disconnected. We'll get this GTX 1650 removed. We got one more, one more screw actually, I forgot. And uh, then we'll pull this motherboard out. I'll do a, vis a quick visual inspection of it. See if I see anything uh, noticeably blown. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll swap the CPU over to a new board. So visual inspection checks out. Uh, I removed the NVMe drive so we can see underneath that uh, just to double check. I tried removing the chipset heatsink, but this sucker is glued on here. I got the uh, little push pins out, but the, the heatsink itself was just, it's, it's not going anywhere. So I don't assume that the chipset is bad. It's all we'd see under there anyway. But uh, yeah, I don't see any blown capacitors or anything, leaky resistors. And the board looks largely new actually. And um, yeah. So we've got a Ryzen 5 3600 in here. It's a great Zen 2 CPU. I think what we're gonna do is swap him over to a B, I might not have a B450 motherboard like this one here. Might have to go B350. I'll see though if I have a B550 for him. So I'm upgrading him to the MSI B550 Tomahawk. I've used this in a few videos in the past. It just kind of sits in the box. And look, I can get these rather readily from vendors. So it's not a huge deal that I'm uh, giving this one to him. But the other big jump, uh, other than obviously the chipset uh, jump with this board is the fact that this is a full size ATX motherboard. Whereas his board was an MATX board. And normally I don't, I don't really mind the fact that there's like empty kind of dead space below an MATX board in a mid tower, but because this case is white, I mean, all that glaring white space below the board is just, it's bothering my OCD probably more than it should. So this is gonna fill out that empty space nicely. He'll have room to expand. We can move that Wi-Fi card further down uh, so that it's pr not pressed right against his, uh, his graphics card fan, which th that was what it was doing before because I had no choice because the motherboard was so short. We're going to install a new kit of RAM. That's gonna be another upgrade I'm going to give him, even though, it's not really an issue that he was complaining about. I think that uh, only having one stick, uh, an eight gig stick at that of DDR4, what speed? 3000 megahertz, cast 16, so it's not bad. I mean, timings and things, those are pretty good, but eight gigs is just not enough. So we're gonna do 16 gigs. He'll have dual channel at his disposal as well with the new kit. Speaking of which, uh, what kit are we gonna give him? So I'm gonna show you guys my secret stash I've got here. This is a, let's see, a Vulcan Z kit. Actually, this will work quite nicely. Let's see, timings. Uh, casts 18, 22, 22, I mean, not, not terrible, but then frequency 3,600 megahertz, so that's pretty good. 
and these are eight gig sticks a piece. We've got two of them, 16 in total, and the color, ooh, that's gonna blend nicely with that tomahawk board. We've got one and two. Nice. And we're gonna slide her on in here very carefully, make sure that we're not crunching cables between the board and the case. Always a bit finicky when you've already got everything else installed. This build is already looking so much nicer with this larger motherboard in here. Of course, I'm gonna give it the uh, proper fixings. I'm gonna clean up cable management. Uh, I'm gonna move these fans a bit closer together up top. I know you can't see them on camera. And uh, yeah, just give them a nice uh, cable management overhaul to make this system look as close to brand new as possible. And all right, I think we might be good for round two now. I think we can try to boot this system up and see if we get a post, whereas we weren't before, for whatever reason. <laughs> Still not sure what happened to that motherboard. We're going to investigate that in this video. Don't worry, I'm not just leaving that thing behind. Uh, I wanna know what exactly is wrong with that thing. Uh, we've got an HDMI cable to plug in. Power, let's see if our power button works this time. Oh, it does. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was a bit worried there for a second. There's a small delay. Come on. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. I press F1, press F2. We'll just load defaults for now. And uh, let's see if it loads into Windows. I'm not sure why it took us there. I told it to. Whatever, we'll just control alt delete. So we are just looking for it to boot into Windows. It is not doing that. Okay, let's see if it sees the drives. So in the BIOS device self-test, we can see both drives. That's a good start. It does see both drives here as well. And it shows that uh, the team group M.2 is connected into M.2 port one. This might be a case of like setting it to SATA mode versus NVMe config. I'm not sure, but I can't find a setting to change that in this BIOS. I mean, we can go into advanced, click PCI subsystem settings. Uh, I mean, we've got PCIe lane config, but we, that's that's it. I don't see anything else. Uh, I don't like this. And even with the two and a half inch SATA disconnected, the motherboard refuses to boot into the M.2. It sees it that it's there, it just doesn't boot into it, which it only does if there's no bootable partition in the first place. I believe that there was at one point, but that he corrupted it. That's that's really the only conclusion I can draw from this. Uh, so I, I believe I have no other choice but to reinstall Windows, which shouldn't be a problem if you had nothing sensitive on there to begin with. It's just, uh, it's not something I like to do just in case. You know, it's kind of a hassle to have to reinstall drivers and everything. But uh, if it's the only solution, we have no choice. So here we go. Oh, okay. So actually it's his M.2 that has the single partition and it looks like it's just a game partition because he's got tons of, uh, tons of space already in use, right? About half of the, the five gig capacity uh, is being utilized already. So I'm assuming that's a Steam library. He kind of hinted at that when I met with him. Uh, and so it's his two and a half inch drive that has the operating system on it. That's very interesting. So I don't want to touch this one. I don't want him to have to reinstall all of his games again. Uh, I'm going to delete the other uh, partitions and reinstall Windows on the two and a half inch drive. It's not gonna make a difference really because these are both limited by the SATA interface. So they'll, they'll earn around the same speeds. So we're gonna need to delete all of these drive two partitions two and three. So we've got this heap of unallocated space here and we're just gonna click next and then Windows should begin installing. And while things are getting ready, it's time to talk about the old motherboard. So I've been running a few tests with this board in between shots and I've concluded that the issue is probably associated with the BIOS chip. I think the BIOS chip is bad actually. And what leads me to believe that is that I was able to actually get for a split second this motherboard to post with another CPU and another power supply. And the message that I got on the post screen was CMOS error. Now, 
you don't usually see just CMOS error, usually it's CMOS checksum error, and that usually indicates you have a bad battery. So I swapped the battery out with one that I knew was working, and I got the exact same error again. It's very, it's very difficult to get that, uh, that little splash screen to pop up there, but once I could get it to show up again, I got the exact same message, CMOS error. And that's all. And it, it's not very common. It's not a very common issue, uh, but it's also not very common that BIOS chips just go bad. Um, so I'm not sure if this, if the motherboard can post or at least show this screen if the BIOS chip is totally gone, but I'm not sure what else could be causing this message or this prompt to show up. Uh, so that's why I think it's a BIOS chip. If I had one on hand, I would desolder the one on this board and swap it out uh, with the, the, the new one just to see. But that's really all I've got. If it's not the CPU, it's not the RAM, it's not the power supply. I mean, it's something on the motherboard itself and you know, you can't see any physical damage to the board, it's, unless it's the chipset, but I, I doubt that. If, if the chipset was bad, I don't think we'd even be seeing uh, this uh, prompt here. So um, I, I'm, I'm concluding that it's a bad BIOS chip only because I have no other explanation for why I'm seeing this message. Nonetheless, the board is bad as it is. It's pretty much bricked. And uh, that's why the system thankfully is working now just fine with the new motherboard. Uh, a bit of a shame that we couldn't get this one working again, but uh, at least we can narrow it down to the board itself and uh, replace it with the working one. And good news on the PC side, the viewer system now works. I've restarted it a few times just to make sure that it opens back up to this prompt every single time. So the, the motherboard now sees uh, that the two and a half inch drive is in fact the boot drive and uh, we get led to this screen here. And I'm gonna go ahead and let the viewer set this up himself. From what it sounds like, he was you know, already doing this a few weeks ago before everything went bad. So uh, I believe the operating system was corrupt. That's, that's the conclusion I'm um, being led to, uh, to make based on the evidence I've seen, the reason why the motherboard wasn't detecting the boot drive to begin with when we were troubleshooting things. So uh, should be good now. And uh, hopefully he doesn't run into any more issues with that uh, <laughs> RGB software suite or whatever that was that uh, he just kind of like rage quit, started deleting files of. That, uh, that didn't turn out too well. So I'm gonna stress that he doesn't do that again. With that, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. I hope that you've enjoyed this playlist so far. These are really fun to film. They are not as intensive to film as the PCDC series. So uh, I'm able to make these a lot faster. The PCDC videos take several days to, uh, to film and produce and clean from start to finish. I think about probably three or four days all in. Uh, and that's, well, depending on how long it takes me to edit, could be even longer than that. Uh, so uh, these here I can finish in just a single day. Uh, and it helps when you have folks in the area who have systems that don't work. So if you live in the Orlando, Florida area and your system is not turning on, not posting, you can't get into Windows, et cetera, et cetera, send me a tweet. My Twitter handle is at Greg Salazar YT. You can also send me a personal email, Greg at Salazar studios.org. Only send me an email if you live in the area. If you do not live in the Orlando, Florida area and you're insisting that you ship the system to me, even if you're willing to pay for shipping, yada, 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 your email is going to be ignored. It's just not worth my time. I still, I still receive many of those uh, people hoping that I can look at their systems. I'm not dealing with shipping uh, when it comes to towers. I've seen how bad it can get uh, from personal experience and I'm not willing to deal with the liability issues, issues associated with that. It's just not worth it. Uh, so only if you live in the Orlando, Florida area or you're willing to drive to Orlando or somewhere near there to meet me, to drop your system off and to pick it back up, uh, that would be appreciated so I can make uh, videos around your broken systems and hopefully uh, restore them to working order and give them back to you at no charge. I don't charge anything to make these videos. I just uh, monetize them on YouTube. I put ads in them, etc. That's how I make my money. And I, I, of course, am not going to charge you if I'm already making money on that side of it. Uh, so thank you so far to those who have been willing to uh, loan me their systems to fix. If you really like the video, you can leave me feedback in the thumbs up, thumbs down section. That would be cool if you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it for whatever reason, give it a thumbs down. Let me know in the comments. Just don't be a total prick, if you know what I mean. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're gonna see next. My name is Greg. Check out all of our troubleshooting gear in the description, as well as our cleaning gear. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for learning with me.